Students tend to think that subtraction is hard. Many of those students are also locked into an algorithmic way of approaching the calculation. I was once helping a student, and that student needed to compute 11 minus 3. So off to the side, he wrote 11 minus 3 in columns. Like an obedient student, he then calculated using the standard algorithm. He couldn't take 3 from 1, so he borrowed. And now the student did 11 minus 3 equals 8. If we take a step back and think about what just happened, what did the student actually accomplish by borrowing? He ended up doing the exact same calculation that he needed to do, but had to include all these extra steps. This is what sometimes happens with students in math. They learn to push the symbols around the page, but they never take a step back and look at what's going on or think about what they're doing. This algorithmic way of thinking about calculations makes them a lot harder. We're going to see in this section how the two-step approach greatly simplifies the calculation. One of the primary goals of the Foundational Mathematics program is to get you to think more carefully about the calculations that you're doing. Example, compute 90 minus 68. We are going to make a comparison between calculating this using columns and calculating this using the two-step approach. We're going to start by looking at this calculation in columns, and we're going to write out the steps that had to be taken. We try to take 8 from 0, and we can't. So we borrow 1 from the 9, and we have to count down 9 minus 1 is 8, and then write the little 1. Now we do the calculation 10 minus 8 to get 2, and 8 minus 6 to get another 2. So the answer is 22. Notice that we had to think about four different calculations, including the one that we couldn't do. And we also had these various bookkeeping steps, like crossing out the 9 to write an 8 and putting the little 1 next to the 0. Now let's compare this to the two-step approach. 90 minus 60 is 30. 30 minus 8 is 22. This took two calculations and no bookkeeping. Just as with the comparison to adding in columns, the final answer with subtracting in columns was constructed right to left, even though we think of numbers left to right. So once again, we're constructing numbers backwards, which makes them even harder to do in your head. This leads one to wonder why we were taught subtracting in columns in the first place. Once again, it comes down to helping students to understand the place value system of numbers. It is very important that we understand how the position of the digit affects the value of the numbers and how those different positions interact with each other. But that lesson should not constrain students to only one way of understanding subtraction or only one way of doing subtraction. Example, compute 97 minus 71. Break it down into a two-step calculation. I'll give you a moment to think it through on your own. ninety seven minus seventy is twenty seven twenty seven minus one is twenty six ninety seven minus seventy one is twenty six example compute one hundred fifty five minus eighty nine take your time and think it through on your own first one hundred fifty five minus eighty is 75, and 75 minus 9 is 66. 155 minus 89 is 66. There are many different tricks and techniques to help perform mental subtraction more easily. For example, when subtracting 9, you could also subtract 10 and add 1. Looking at the picture from the number line, it's easy to see that this makes sense. Most people find subtracting 10 and adding 1 easier to do than subtracting 9. But these types of tricks are slightly off topic for us. Practice the two-step mental subtraction process because that will be the most natural thing to do.